Welcome back, guys. The fourth ever episode of the Galgo Games podcast. I'm Zach. I'm joined today by Owen. Yo. Uh, Brad. Hey. And Connor. Hello there. So, catch up wise for us, we've had a pretty steady week. I think this is like our full our full first week, I guess, of doing consistent streaming and stuff like that. We've got some YouTube videos going out. Connor, what have you been uh, What have you been uploading to the YouTube channel recently? Dragon Ball. <laughs> what's What's happened in the world of of Dragon Ball? Don't we, I know we've got a bit to talk about later, but a brief overview of uh, what's happened. So, new DLC character pack. Um, yep. Season two, and they've also shown the teaser trailer for the ARPG that they were talking about. Yep, sounds exciting. So go into more of those later. Yep, uh, and we've been streaming a lot of Sea of Thieves. We're doing some Smash reviewers. Um, all pretty, all pretty fun stuff. We're having a good time. So we'll st- we'll jump straight into the news, unless anyone else has got anything to uh, to bring up. Uh, uh, not no. really. Oh, oh, actually, I've got one one small thing. Small, mm-hmm. small thing. Um, there's a, a pretty cool game that I got from game last last week. Yeah. Um, it, it only cost twenty quid, and it's called Starlink. It was on the Switch. I feel like I've heard. I think of it's it. called Starlink. Oh yeah, that's the one that it's it's the one with Star Fox in it, right? Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> he's in the Switch version, yeah. and and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab what comes with the twenty quid box and show it on camera quickly, <laughs> because it's pretty cool. It comes with like his. Is it, is it the A wing ship? And I don't know. I th- but, I, I've, I'm I'm not huge. I don't do Nintendo stuff. I can't stuff remember often. what they. I can't remember what they're called. But but it but it's pretty cool, and it it's like a it's almost like a toy, really. Give it and give it, it a description, an audio for for the audio listeners on. Give it a vi- like a, a visual description. Right. right. Well, you can go into Google and search <laughs> Star Fox's <laughs> ship. But oh, it's, God, pal. it's it's pretty. It's like spiky. It, it's pretty pointy. Um, mostly grey with Star Fox's like logo on it, a little right. little fox. Um, and you can take it off the controller, and you have the little Star Fox sort of pilot that sits inside it. So it sort of like fits together, um, nice. which is pretty cool, and like just sits on top of a controller that holds the Joy Cons. How's the um, game? Is is the game good? I haven't played a huge amount of the game because I've not been, um, I've not had a lot of time, but I played about twenty minutes of it. And it, and, it, and it's all right for, for a twenty quid game, and it comes with like a toy that you can play with if you're that way inclined. <laughs> um, mine just so sits you've on not my been desk. playing with it. Uh, no, no, uh, mine, mine, it just sits on my desk like an ornament. Yeah, um, but it, it's cool. And I, yeah, I just I literally just saw it and thought I'd talk about it. Yeah, yeah, cool. But it's, it's it's really cheap at the moment. So if you do want to check you, out Starlink, yeah. it is available on multiple platforms, including Nintendo Switch. So we'll jump into the news. A bit of a recap from last week very quickly. We talked about Assassin's Creed and the DLC that basically forced um, players into making a <clears throat> into a straight relationship. Uh, since we talked about it last time, uh, Ubisoft have announced that they will be altering a cutscene and some dialogue choices within that DLC, basically to cater for those that, that were gay all the way through the game. Is this a fine... A fine thing. It's a bad uh, thing. Had the DLC already come out? They like <coughs> yes, yes. The DLC came out. Re- yeah. So they, okay. I, I, I have nothing against it. I mean, my only thing with these with these things is like, did they not think about it? Yeah, surely like, beforehand. They did they not this. think? Like, oh yeah, we gave them the options in the game, but now we're going to release this DLC where they don't have the option anymore. Like, surely someone thought, wait a minute. Should yeah. we not give them options? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems stupid. It's strange that somehow slipped by yeah, the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. It's bizarre, but whatever. Good, good for the for the people that were bothered about it. That's yeah. great. You know, I'm happy for them. Brad, I know you're a AC player. Does this matter to you at all? It does not affect me in the slightest. <laughs> like, I, I don't like the relationships in that game are really not interesting anyway. Like I think I'd be more more sort of polarised about this entire thing if it happened in a Bioware game where I care. Yeah, because um, the relationships in Bioware games are important. But, oh, you mean like Mass Effect ones? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Unity you just bounce between people. Not Unity. Um, Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey. Odyssey. You just bounce between people every five seconds. It's, it doesn't matter really Yeah, exactly. 
when now they've made it matter in the uh, in this DLC and people are quite angry. They just want represented, don't they? Wait, people <laughs> yeah. are angry. Yeah, the people well, are ang- wait, ang- angry. Oh, ang- I'm assuming angry before they're fixing it. Yeah, they were yeah. angry yeah. that their like, the gay characters were wiped out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's fair enough, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move on to some new news, and we'll start with probably the biggest piece of news this week, I guess. Uh, Metroid Prime 4 has restarted development, this time with Retro Studios taking over. So they released, basically Nintendo released a, a strange update video. Uh, in which yeah, he just said bizarre. basically that the game is 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 stopped its current development progress and it's not reaching the standards that Nintendo want. So they're basically restarting the game with Retro, who made the original Metroid games involved. So on th- GameCube, not like the Super <coughs> yeah. Metroidvania ones. I think this is it's it's such a strange reaction because it's been super positive that I've seen. Like usually, obviously, when stuff like this happens, people aren't too happy. But, well, I mean, uh, it's weird because, like, Nintendo fans are, are bizarre creatures where, like, you know, they'll go, oh, we've had a, tr- a massive earthquake in Japan, so Nintendo Direct is going to be pushed back a couple a couple of days. And people are like, well, fuck you. Yeah. I want my Direct now. I want to see what Smash characters are coming out. And then they say, oh, we're, we're th- this game was not up to standard, so we're going to restart and make it good. And, yeah. then, you know, you'd... I was almost surprised to not see any backlash, but that's great, I guess. So, uh, the stats saying like the video only has two thousand like downvotes, which is really surprising. Yeah, for a delay for, for a year. This is yeah. years, probably years. Oh yeah, yeah. A, a complete restart of development. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a it's a good move from them though that they that they've done that because like I think like uh, like a recent one like Metroid Andromeda, uh, not Metroid, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, right? Like yeah. as much as you guys like Mass Effect, I like Mass Effect too. But it would have been, it, like looking back at it, it would have been amazing if they'd say, "No, this isn't up to our standard. We're going to push it back a little bit further, but it's going to be an actual good game." Right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's what people that, are appreciating. That the fact that they held yeah. their hands up and said, "Like that would have been really time. good." So I think it's a really good move from them. Definitely, I completely agree. I dig it, and I think obviously people are happy that it's retro back to do the game that's probably if I think it was another developer people wouldn't be so pleased mm. the fact that it's retro coming back I guess gives gives them more more leeway more credit Brad anything you want to add to that or? I was about to say something about what you said any other developer how long has yeah. CD Projekt Red uh, delayed Cyberpunk for and <laughs> we're willing well, to wait delayed, they've never delayed no, well, they, oh, okay. they, they, they delayed they did it's been they radio did delay the Witcher a lot they did, yeah, they did yeah, delay yeah, Witcher did 3 do. Yeah, but no. they delayed The Witcher a lot. But apparently, that was for um, because consoles were like holding the game back. Yeah, like if you look at the original trailers, it looks so different, so different. But then when they had to like, oh my god, this is going to be a completely different experience for console players. Yeah, they had to kind of change the game a lot. Apparently, yeah. so sucks. I think but well, consoles dragging us all back buy, again. They buy the time, don't they? So like CD yeah. Projekt Red at this point can take. What, however they can long take as long as they want. Game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no it's, been, it's been years since Witcher 3 at this point. Yeah, but we know that Cyberpunk was that, 2015? Uh, no, I feel like it was before 20... I might be wrong. No, Witcher 3 was March 2015. Yeah, okay. And then obviously Ooh. they've been working on Cyberpunk since. Yeah. Hype. So we've got uh, we've got a new another game coming out soon, which was constantly hit with delays because they were like, it's, yeah. it's not ready yet. So, the big one. Yeah, the big one. I will remain not saying it until later in the video. Yeah. But Wait, it's just one? like... I feel like everyone already knows what, to, what game we're talking about. Oh, yeah, everyone Some, already somehow knows. Somehow Connor doesn't know what game we're talking about. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> but but it, it's been hit by so many delays, and it's just like, we, we'll finally be able to see like, yeah. it, if it was worth it or not. Like, if it's a good game... Oh! Then... <laughs> There we go. Someone's the pennies just dropped for someone. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. As yeah, of we wait t- a as long of time for that. Ex- yeah. Exactly. So we've we've been waiting hell of a long time for that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's hyped. <laughs> I don't know. It's I hyped. forgot that one. And but I feel like they haven't really been like given the time to like say, "Oh yeah, just take your time." People just didn't think the game was ever coming. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knew. 
All right, stop being cryptic about that one. We'll talk about it in a oh, minute. Yeah, okay. I feel like people will already know what we're talking about. I would hope so. Course, I hope yeah. so. I'm All right, as dumb as I we'll move on. Unless anyone's got anything else to add to that Metroid Prime nah, stuff. Nah. nah, not really. I'm excited. I made Samus, so I'm interested in Metroid now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess. Um, okay, so next stuff, uh, Dragon Ball. A lot of Dragon Ball things happened last night, right? Yay. So right. Connor can talk us through most of it if you want, Connor. So... Uh, there was the World the World Cup for Dragon Ball, or World I was, Tour. Sorry, I was watching that. Was which really was... Um, it was pretty good. Uh, if if you know the game... It, like, I was complaining about Super Dash, if you watch my YouTube videos, by the way. You should go on there, Gallagher Boys YouTube. Um, in my wish list, I explained the characters I wanted and some system changes. Quick talk about what was going on in the tournament is... Uh, the game has gone even more degenerate <laughs> from jump back Super Dash to jump right above them and then Super Dash because... The person who's even who's pressing Super Dash doesn't even know what side they're gonna land on. So it's just an ambiguous mix up <laughs> for both people. So how are you supposed to block it? Fucking shit system. <laughs> anyway. Characters. It's cool stuff. We all knew Jiren was coming. That yep. was the warrior from Universe Eleven they were talking about. So that's Pog, for people that uh like him. His level three looks underwhelming, but to be fair I didn't actually know if that was maybe a dramatic finish or a level three. But yeah. Um and then Videl was shown, which I think people probably had doubts about. I called it. Um, and it's Saiyaman combo, which is even cooler. Um, and then the last two were the new movies, Broly and Gogeta Super Saiyan Blue. So yeah. it was definite they were going to put those in because the movie's done yeah. insane. Yeah, of course. And it's, it, like, those two are going to rake in money, like, so much money off of, off of those two characters. Um, I am surprised they didn't show Ultra Instinct Goku. Because he's the whole thing with Jiren. It's Jiren versus Goku and he's in Ultra Instinct. So you think he and will f- be in, in the game? Yeah, then? I do think he's going to be in the game. Um, because I, f- I also feel like he would be the most uh, likely to make them the most money. Yeah, probably. Like, d- DLC is all about making money, right? It's good for us because we get new characters, which is sick. But for them, it's all about making money. Like, even I I'm know putting... about Ultra, Ultra Instinct. Yeah, so. Ultra Instinct Goku is like easily going to make so much money. Um That's- so yeah, I, I hope he gets in the game, yeah. memes aside. They've got two uh, fighters other... yet to be announced. So. Yes, there's still two more. So they've revealed four, and there's still two more to be um, to be shown. And then the other thing was the ARPG yep. that they were teasing. The trailer's pretty... I don't know. It's like... It's typical... Like, you play the story of the story of Goku, as they called it, um, yeah. which seems to be going from Dragon Ball up until... I'm not sure where it will go up to, if it includes Super or not. But it showed like old fights against Piccolo and TN, yeah, like yeah, tournament yeah. of power, or not tournament of power, but world uh, world tournament, and but no Kid Goku. So I I don't know where it's going to start from, where it's going to end. But the ARPG shit, they didn't really show what the fighting's like. They didn't show all they all you saw was all these cutscenes and then Goku walking through, um, like the fields and uh, the city. And that was it. Yeah. So you, so it's like free roam and stuff like that, I guess, which is showing the the RPG aspect of it. But and we're playing as Goku, it seems. Then yeah, so entirely as Goku. So it's not going to be like create your own no, Saiyan it's, sort of deal. It's all like playing through the story of Dragon Ball entirely through Goku. Yeah. Which I feel like is every fucking Dragon Ball game anyway. Uh, that's fine. Honest. What we'll get with that is that Ed will say that it's now not an RPG. <laughs> Possib- yep. Yeah, possibly. Even though it's definitely an RPG because oh, yeah, we're role playing as Goku. It doesn't fit his definition. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, even though we're role playing as Goku. <laughs> we, we can look yeah. forward to his Is It or Is It Not an RPG yeah, series we'll do later that. on. Yeah. When that game for, comes uh, out, we'll get Ed to sit down and play it for half an hour, give his verdict on whether it is an RPG or not. I mean, we already know the answer, but we'll do it for mm. the content. I don't know how many times it's been now, but sorry, Vegeta fans, it's the story of Goku again. Sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like. V- Vegeta is not that great of a. Like, to be fair, that's a lie. He's he's one of the more interesting characters in the fact that he, he is, changes. He, he, he kind of changes around. He's his... like the most developed character in Dragon Ball. One hundred percent. He's like he went from complete villain to kind of a, a good guy, anti villain kind of th- or anti hero kind of thing to straight up being probably like the most likable character in Super. He was yeah, all about f- his family. And saving his universe, even so much to save the other universe that had Saiyans on it. So it's like he's pretty great. Goku, like everyone hates Goku now. I love Goku still. I think people are being stupid when they say like, "Oh, if Goku 
starting the tournament to power he's evil it's like no they were going to start it anyway goku gave you a chance by letting you actually fight for your like right to live kind of thing it's stupid but dragon ball fans are rabid he's Does, not evil do- he let you fight for it <laughs> yeah well it was either going to be get erased full stop or fight to possibly not get erased does um does an action RPG Dragon Ball game can like excite you, Owen? As a as a, I guess a non hardcore Dragon Ball fan. I'm I'm not a Dragon Ball fan yeah. at all, to be so honest. So, would you be um, interested in something like this? Would it get you on board with a series, or is it something that you expect only the sort of like Connor that would would play? I'd I'd play it if I was sponsored to play it. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> no. Capcom or whoever's making the game. I don't even know. Bandai, Bandai, yeah. I'm Bandai, Obviously, I'm that Capcom, that one Capcom dev that's listening, that's uh, yeah. hooked me up and I'll play it. No, um, I don't have much interest in it. I might. It'd be one of those that I might pick up in a sale three years down the line. Like, oh, yeah, doesn't doesn't excite me at all. I think the problem with Dragon Ball games is like, it's it's a problem and not a problem that. They have a big enough fan base of just like people who have watched and grown up with Dragon Ball that anything they make can pretty much just be made, just be for them, and they'll know they'll get good sales off of just those fans. It doesn't really matter if no one else buys the game because the, the fan base is big enough. So I kind of understand that, yeah, not not people who wouldn't, who aren't into Dragon Ball totally aren't going to buy the game. Yeah, I don't think like, anyway. I just I just don't relate to anyone at all. Yeah, like I, I yeah. barely know anyone's name. I know Piccolo. Goku, and there's some like Vegeta. No, I only know Vegeta because you literally just mentioned <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. and I think I know which one you're on about. Um, but then the only other character I know is like some space Egyptian cat dog thing. Beerus. Yeah, I, Beerus. I didn't know Beerus. didn't know his name, but I'd be able to point him out and be like, "Oh, I know of him." Yeah. <laughs> cool. Beerus the god. Well, exciting for that. That's probably a few years off, I assume, at this point. Probs. Yeah. Not going to be too soon. Yeah. So we'll switch over. We'll talk about something that's coming out next month, and that is Metro Exodus, a game I'm kind of excited for. Um, I'm kind of playing through the first two at the minute. Well, the first one, fun games. Uh, this one is quite different. I think it's more of an open, open. It's not open world, but it's open levels with uh, you sort of not in the sewers, not in the metros, but out in the uh, in the open. So games coming out on usual consoles and PC. But it's just been announced that Metro Exodus will be released exclusively on the Epic Games Store. So it's another one that's that's dropped from Steam. It's happening! <laughs> it's happening. Yep. Uh, Didn't, I'm sure you talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we did. <laughs> There's been a few. Ubisoft obviously been doing it with some games, The Division. Uh, the Telltale yeah. Walking Dead is now only on Epic Games Store. And so so basically, the ga- I assume this is because they want to make more money. <laughs> And yeah, they're just probably. saying that okay, the Epic Game Stories is the best way for us to make our money at the minute. So here we are. God, I feel like that's such a short-sighted, like, thing. Like, oh, because we get more cut, a bigger cut. I don't... Like you're, you're taking yourself off Steam store. Who is? Oh, yeah, I think it'll it'll wake up Steam. They'll be like, wow, a lot of people are actually doing this. Who's Metro's they, they publisher? They probably just thought the initial ones were a bit of a threat, and then Deep now seeing it happen. It might be a good thing in the long run, to be honest. Yeah, Deep Silver are publishing the game. They sent out an updated press release that said it will return to Steam and other storefronts next February 2020. I, th- I think they've also said that anyone who has already pre-ordered it on Steam will be yeah, honoured to their yeah. pre-order. So it's mm-hmm. not like if you have pre-ordered it, you're going to lose it. Yeah, correct. So It's, it's just so weird. that Surely Valve are going to start, they're going to have to change the pricing structure for developers, right? They have to. Otherwise, it's going to keep happening. Valve yeah, is well. We st- we still haven't seen like a, a new release through this yet, have we? Like, no, that hasn't I think the division seen. will be the first big one. Yeah, mm. that's in March, is it? March fifteenth. I think it's next think. month. Maybe it's March. It's it's soon anyway. It's very soon. Okay, I think the open beta is next month, and yeah. it's March release. But either yeah, way, right. it's like we're, I guess they'll just have to see from the sales how well it actually does by not being on Steam. Yeah. And then I, I reckon that's what, as soon as they see it does really well, Steam would be like, oh, yeah, everyone will jump ship as well. To. Yeah. But yeah, basically. It's, it's so. See, the thing is, though, it's not really a problem because a lot of people will already have the Epic Game Store for Fortnite. 
Hmm. So so you're going to have an audience already there because of yeah. Fortnite. If, um, as long as it's not like you play where everything is just a nightmare to run, or well, in my experience, it's been a nightmare to run, uh, that's fine. I, I, you play used to be really bad. Now it's not terrible. For me, yeah. at least. I'm talking just... like, do you remember when like, Trials Fusion came out? Yeah, it, was, it used to I be bad. I tried to play that and it was like, it wouldn't even let me open the game. It used to be bad. At least, at least, on, like, two pounds, it's fine. I just hate when things sort of open in Steam and it opens for you play anyway. So I'd rather oh, just, that's the worst. I'd rather just skip Steam and go straight to Uplay, play, which is what yeah. I do with my Assassin's Creed games, etc. Let's not lie, you'd rather just, skip Uplay. I would rather, but if it's going to open in in both anyway, I'll just skip the Steam part. Anyway, we'll move on. Get behind that. We'll yeah. move on. We're going to talk about the game that we uh, we hinted at, which, if you hadn't already guessed, it was Kingdom Hearts 3, and at time of recording, <gasps> the game is out tomorrow, or in about... I don't believe you! It's time about 4 hours <laughs> and 30 minutes from now, the game's coming out. Which, I for some people, you. have been waiting how many years, Connor, for this? Uh, 2005, was that 14 years? I have been personally waiting. I played yeah. it on its year of release. A long, long time. And so, it because... Got to the... Yeah. Go on. Uh, I was going to say we were talking about yesterday's act. Remember the the that cutscene, the Keyblade graveyard yeah. where it's Ventus, Terra, and Aqua fighting yeah. fucking whatever his name is, Xehanort. Yeah, Xehanort. And and the motorcycle uh, looking dude, kid, evil yeah. evil Sora or whatever. Yeah. I remember watching that like not long after f- finishing playing that game and being like, oh my god, this is the trailer for Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, we're gonna get Kingdom Hearts three. This is the best thing. This is the best day of my life. And then, uh, and then it became 2019, and yeah. I still don't have it yet. And it comes out tomorrow, and I still don't believe it until I get it tomorrow or yep. midnight tonight. And I, yeah, I was watching uh, or I was listening to the soundtracks today, and I was actually getting proper fucking emotional. It was like the great, it's been a soundtrack. long, long time waiting for this game. It means it means a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. Who, uh, who did you uh, order it off out of interest? I ordered it off on it Amazon. From- it's uh, gonna... I did try to cancel my order so I could buy it on PlayStation and download it and play it at midnight. But other stores so, are available. I was other stores say, are available. I, I, I reckon uh, I'm calling it now. It's going to do something like what happened to me and Zach when we both bought a game from Amazon, yeah. and like, oh. mine, <laughs> mine arrived at nine o'clock in the morning, and Zach's didn't get yeah. there till like eight. Yeah, <laughs> that's so that's bizarre. bizarre. You two yeah. living in the same house? That's yeah, so literally the same. I think I ordered mine after he did as well. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> But oh, was I it, mean, was it FIFA? It was FIFA. Yeah, it was one of the yeah. FIFA's. So, so many people are excited about this game. Uh, people tend to leak it, especially when the the game has a worldwide release date. And so, because of these leaks, uh, the the director, I'm going to try and pronounce his name. I might butcher. Is it Tetsuya Tetsuya Nomura? Te- Tetsuya Nomura. Yeah, he's basically said that he doesn't know whether he wants to do a simultaneous worldwide release anymore because oh, really? this happens. Um, he doesn't want to do a simultaneous no, release. No, because he, he doesn't like the fact that people have got copies in the West and leaked the game. So, because obviously it, that... release, it releases I in thought Japan a, sim- a simultaneous world release would solve that problem, right? Apparently, no, because what happens basically is when they do a simultaneous one, the copies get shipped everywhere um, at the same time. And because of that, for some reason, <laughs> the people in the West are worse at leaking stuff than the people in Japan. Um, and so people in the West got hands of it, and I think about four copies got out in the wild. Um, uh, and basically, well, a lot of people spoiled the game. The game, the game did come out. The game did come out in Japan on the like, last early. Friday. Yeah, yeah, it came out last Friday. So Compared there's been spoilers from that one. Yeah, but obviously it, the game leaked like a month or two ago. Stuff like people had the game. Uh, I think it was before Christmas. People had the game in the hands. Okay. In, yeah, which was obviously a problem. And so he's basically saying that he doesn't want this to happen anymore, and so he'll just delay the release in the West again, like he did in oh, the old ones. Fuck you, whoever did that. Fuck yeah. the people that did that. That really sucks because it's like a it is like dodging a minefield for the rest of us that have to wait for the game. You yeah. don't want to be spoiled because you've been waiting for fifteen years. I just don't understand people that want who are excited for the game who would want to know the spoilers before they play. I don't know, man. People are people are really weird. I mean, I guess uh, if, if you don't, if you're not going to buy the game, sure. But I feel like most people are so invested in Kingdom Hearts, they're just going to buy it. Yeah. 
It's it's weird. I mean, I don't blame him for for thinking this. He's worked on they've worked on this game for how long? Who knows at Who this knows? point? Who knows? Yeah. And uh, and someone leaks it before the release date. That would suck. But I know, I know people have been given copies, like streamers. Does it? Yeah, yeah. But that was obviously like in the last week or two, compared to yeah. months that the game leaked. Which in the last week or two is natural for ramping up your marketing stuff for the game, but it's yeah. too obviously too early months months before. Yeah. Do we, yeah, Connor? Months early is ridiculous. Yeah. Do we think, Connor, that this does this confirm more Kingdom Hearts? I mean, potentially. It just depends on the ending of this one, to be honest. Because would he well, say that I, he's not going to do this anymore if he's not making another Kingdom Hearts game? Or? I well, mean, could no, be talking Tetsuya, about a different I'm, franchise. I'm fairly sure Tetsuya Nomura also worked on Final Fantasy games. Yeah. So it could just be Squeenix in general. Like, yeah. stuff that they're working on, they may just reconsider now. Because they have a lot of games where, you know, like, what's the next game coming out? It's another highly anticipated one of Final Fantasy VII's remake. Laugh. If you think that's the next game, yeah, there'll be what, there'll be at least no, two no, more Square um, Enix games before that. No, but that's that's another game that they've got that people are really, really waiting on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I can understand where they're coming from. But I mean, more Final Fantasy, more Kingdom Hearts games, yeah, sure, why not? 3.2.7.1. Yeah. Fucking who knows what get, they make we're next? We're definitely gonna get like yeah. a, a pie, Kingdom Hearts the pie. Next, uh, the Three next, the next something, the next mobile point. game. Yeah, Dream Drop Distance or whichever one was the mobile game. And we're gonna sound the klaxon, by the way, uh, the air horn. If anyone's got one present, I might, I might start putting. I might get an actual asset of an air horn <laughs> and put it in these features. And this air horn, as you maybe listened last week, is for Brad because this Radius. is another game. game. That Brad can't play. <laughs> Insert the horn dot wav here. So, Brad, give us your defense, give us your reasoning. Obviously, you're not interested in Kingdom Hearts. Right? It. Yeah, my, my very simple reason is I don't care. God, <laughs> it's it's sacrilege. Now, full full backstory. I've literally only just started playing Kingdom Hearts the past like two months in anticipation for this game because I was always turned off by the Final Fantasy part. But the Final Fantasy part is like 5% of the game. And I feel like you can go through all this game, never these games never playing Final Fantasy, and you won't be lost at all. I'm having a great yes, time. De- I can't wait for the next one. When when Kingdom Hearts was coming out and the Final Fantasy games at the same time, like around that, that same period, yeah. they were nothing alike. Absolutely nothing alike. Yeah, there's only really I, I don't the think main anyways. Final Fantasy. Like, obviously, I know Cloud. So when he shows up, it's, it's cool because I know everyone knows who Cloud is. Mm. It's not like. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not that much of an idiot. <laughs> it's not super obscure like Final Fantasy references. I'm sure they're in there that I'm not seeing, but it's oh, not. It's not a game changer. If you enjoy Disney, you're going to enjoy the game. If you don't even enjoy Disney, I mean, sure, Disney's a main, a big part of the game, but uh, the story outside of the Disney worlds is the best part. Mm. And that, that's usually saved for the last like 20 minutes of the game, but still. It's, it's fun stuff. I'm very excited. Obviously, I've been waiting two months. Connor's been waiting six, 16 years. Well, uh, I feel like, has it actually been like 16 the, years? 14. It came out in 2005. My God. Since Kingdom Hearts 2. 2. There's been weird two. random games in between that are important. Oh, yeah. But there's, not full but I'm talking off of the last one I played um, yeah. was Kingdom Hearts 2. That is You've seen the story. The game, you? So I played Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. Right. I wasn't asked. I wasn't. Did not care for the other games. I'll just I'll I watched stuff for you know information about them because they were really weird because they kind of I'm sure Zach you'll agree they retcon a lot of their shit right. They yeah they mess around with stuff a bit. So like there's certain events that happen in the game that have almost no explanation and then in <laughs> two point eight or in recoded or something like yeah, that they'll explain they'll, it, uh... they'll they'll explain how that makes sense and you know an extremely convenient way for the story yeah. I, I, so yeah i think birth by sleep is basically considered to be kingdom hearts zero like that's a pretty important one at least for the story is, um, is that back when it's about ventus y- yeah terror that's, that, and, that's yeah. that one yeah so like, i've y- yeah i've seen that i'm currently trying to get through dream drop distance like the movie, I've got like four hours left, and then I've got to watch Fragmentary Passage, which is only like a one hour of cutscenes. So I need to do that all tonight, basically, ready to play Kingdom Hearts tomorrow. Rip. I'm gonna have a great time. 
Have you but, got uh, the day off? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at work tomorrow and then obviously I'll play in the evening. That's why we're recording this podcast today on Monday, so I can play Kingdom Hearts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Wo- I did wonder slightly. Right. And I'm busy on Normally Wednesday, so I, I couldn't record then. But yeah, right. it's all, it's all hype. We'll move on then to the, the last the last news story. Owen, if if you've got anything, if you want to cover this one for us, you probably know more about well, this sort of stuff than than I do at least. I, I say I'm I'm not um, I'm not really big into my league anymore, but. Yep. Fnatic were always my favourite league team, and I probably follow them the most of all of the esport teams. Yeah, um, I've, I've I followed them in Overwatch before they made Overwatch League, and everything went to like cities or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that yeah, they've uh, Fnatic have hired or signed three UK British people to their academy roster for the League of Legends. Yeah, which is it's not their it's basically their B team. Yeah, it's yeah. Not. It's just like so, a normal sport academy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically. Um, it's got it's kind of good to see because Fnatic are a, a British like organisation. I think that's the word. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and they have been... They're basically... I think most of the people that they've signed have been Swedish. Like, <laughs> they, they just have a have a connection with Swedish esport players. Yeah. Um the, their Dota teams were like all over the place. Malaysia, Philippines, so oh, really? it's pretty good to see this to be honest. Yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so it it's just it's quite nice to see, yeah. Um so four of the five in the main roster uh are British. Um the the mid laner is uh Swedish. Mm-hmm. And the, We can't get everything away, we can't <laughs> baby <laughs> steps. <laughs> what? Baby steps. We can't. We can't. We can't have all the positions, can we? Oh, we can't no, have a full was, five man. I was just going to say that the coach or is he's not. Uh, I don't yeah. think he's British either. He I looks think he like might he's be Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and then yeah, the other four roster, the, the other four positions are all British. Which yeah, it'd be it's not interesting news. to see how how they perform. Because um, uh, it's not it, UK. See, like in worldwide, you know, like the big the big scenes. UK seems to be pretty underrepresented. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm not the biggest watcher, but I think our biggest uh, British winner is uh, I think he's called like Tex or something, like uh, T2 Tex, uh, the FIFA World Champion. Like, yeah, he's the best see, that makes sense, world. doesn't it? Because yeah, FIFA that is makes like, sense. F- football is an Eng- a UK sort of sport. Yeah. So you could, we have you really good fighting game players. But, oh, I think in a uh, actually speaking of that Tex guy, he lost seven one to some to <laughs> rank Great. to. Rank eleven, I think. Whoever was playing eleventh in the semi final, he lost seven one. Great. Okay. Our only really <laughs> hope's gone. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. He still I think because he got to the semi final he earned enough points to still remain number one. But yeah. the, the number eleven person jumped straight up to fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. So yeah. Yeah, Connor, there is some there is some UK fighting game, but they don't seem to be like top the very peak that I've seen, like top winning tournaments sort of thing. Well, um, Problem X won Evo for Street Fighter Five. When was that? Which that was this year. Oh, really? In uh, August, yeah. So we had uh, an English, English guy oh, win Evo, nice. which is huge. Uh, he's very good, but uh, we don't have like many. We'll have like the odd, the odd great one. Yeah. Uh, we've got some strong stuff, but like in other scenes, I don't really know. Like Dota, there's, there's like there's no a few English players. Around, but I don't don't know how consistent they perform and stuff. They might just yeah. appear for. A, I think we've got some in the competitive Pokemon scene as well, like that get <laughs> nice. quite cons- quite consistent, quite consistently <laughs> high, but never like the top. Yeah. So yeah. Brad, the you- greatest game. You- Why don't you enter competitive Pokemon, Brad? Uh, I'd have my ass handed to me quite quickly. I reckon. It's I'm hard. Not- it's, 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 it's hard, you know. It's surprisingly hard. Yeah. yeah. Like you look at it yeah, and think, Pokemon oh, it's a child's is- game, and then no. That's a dark place. It's very difficult. Oh yeah, competitive Pokemon is ridiculous. And the worst part is, is when I was trying to get into it. Literally, everyone just has Hackamons, and you can't, you can't compete if you're trying to do it legit, or you need to put in hours to get like the perfect IV Pokemon. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's an they insane it, amount of work if yeah, you want to do it legit. They, they made it a bit easier for the IV part at least with the bottle caps, but you need to farm the bottle caps, and you can get like one a day. The what? Yes. Yeah. Bottle caps. What are bottle, bottle caps? Bottle caps 
the bo bottle caps increase, um, or I think a normal bottle cap increases a single IV to max, and a golden bottle cap increases all IVs to max, so 31. Right. Nice. Um, but then, you yeah, obviously, you need to manipulate um, the natures of stuff yep. as well. Yeah. It's, it's just it's so much effort. For yeah. six it's Pokemon what, as well, right? Yeah, for six Pokemon. Yeah. Well, if you want a, an actual competitive team, you need more than six. Yeah. So like, oh, well, so yeah, I imagine. Sw switch around compositions and there's, stuff. There's also, like, a lot of people, I don't know if they still run Hidden Power a lot, but there was, like, different Hidden Powers, and, like, even getting those was such an arsehake. Yeah, so that was based on, I think that was based on your nature, determined your yeah, I think so. um, hidden power, your hidden power type. I won't lie, I have quite a few perfect IV Hidden Power Pokemon. <laughs> I got them when I was it's, doing that. I've, I've never a hundred percent thing I've a while never back. Been into that. It's just never been a thing that I just play the games. So I just catch one Pokemon of each like species and I'm done. I'm happy with it. It does the job offline. And that's all yeah. I need it. Yeah. I breed sometimes for like um obviously like certain evolutions that you need to breed for etc. But for the most part, I just catch mm. one and be done. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I played I like Pokemon the... Showdown a lot though. I like the shiny hunting. Yeah, I'd, I'm I've, on, I've, I've I'm only on seven, ever caught. I think I've only ever caught one shiny. And it was a um, a Fero in like, I think it was in Fire Red. I caught a shiny Fero. That was nice. the only ever shiny I've caught in a Pokemon game. What was, mine was Floatzel in Diamond and Pearl. Oh, nice. Owen's got know. seven. Well, I've got seven in this game. I don't know oh. who my first one was. Oh uh, no, my first one was Shiny Aaron. In Sapphire. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. You did say that. That's a cool one. Yeah, I, th that's I a think good I did, one. yeah. Brad, have you ever caught a shiny, mate? R Rattata, I think. That's <laughs> that's, the, that's the usual one, though, isn't it? I've, yeah, God I've, damn. I've, got, I've got a shiny Rattata in Let's Go. I, I deliberately hunted for it. I feel like Let's Go is cheap. He's much easier to get shinies, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I remember you explaining it, Owen. Yeah, how much it, it, is, it is. It is a bit easier. But each game since uh, Gen 4 has had an easier way to get shinies. Yeah, yeah. there's a trick to I it in Taras. It's, it's, there's, there's a limit of, like, sure, make it rare, but isn't it... it I think it used to be million, like one in millions of chances that you would get one, or something stupid like that. Oh, um, like, I think it's so still, rare, I think it is still that high. I, th I think the highest was, like, 16,821. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And that's just, like, base chance in Gen 3. Yeah. Well, God we'll, damn. we'll keep shiny hunting and we'll move on. We're going to move on to uh, what's out this week. And we've kind of hinted at one small game that's out this week. We won't <laughs> talk too much about it. It's Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, does anyone on. have any more to add about <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3 very quickly? I don't yeah. think... I feel like we've we're, talked, we're just... We've talked a lot about it. Yeah, and I feel like that's going to take up, obviously, the main bulk of most people this week playing games. Of course. People will still be finishing off Resident Evil 2. Go on, bro. I'm impressed that you put sticks in the cursed mummy and Rob's not in this call. Sphinx, See this, isn't it? Sphinx. Sphinx. Sphinx and the cursed Sticks, mummy. flipping heck. It's, it's being it's released on Switch. Worth, it's, it's worth a shout out. Yeah, of course everyone, it is. It's an incredible, incredible video game. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> been gagging for this game. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the reviews. Through I've the incredible roof. video game I've, that none of us have I've heard pure joy in that man's face, that, that Rob, for the past few weeks playing that game. Yeah. Not not is it, is frustration and anger at all. Is it yeah, it's, I no, think it's just a re-release. I don't even know if it's can class it as a remake. It's just okay. it's coming out on Switch base. I don't, I've not even looked into it. I just thought I'd put it on because it's funny because Rob plays the game. <laughs> but that's Rob was out, conveniently playing it not that long ago. That's out this week. If you don't like Kingdom Hearts, you could play Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy on the Nintendo Switch. Or yep. you could also play, which I'm hearing good things about actually, is Ace Combat Seven. Yeah, I've heard a lot. Is, Brad, I feel like is, this is, is that a plane game? Because I feel like I've heard That's of it, but I've never played it's a it. It's a, it's a fighter. It's a fighter jet it's a, game. It's a console what? release, though, isn't it? Oh, Tomorrow. oh, hang it on. Came... Let's just double check that, Owen. Oh came... my god, is no, no, it? No, no. It ca it came out like a week ago on PC. Ah, so it's already out. We don't need to get the horn out yeah. this time. So put Brad, the horn down. Put the horn down. You can play this game. I know you play like War Thunder and historical fighting, like. Playing games, yeah. I like... Are you interested in a modern, a modern fighter jet sort of See, experience? I play War Thunder because it's got really smooth fly mechanics and everything. So, honestly, I could be tempted you would by assume, a seven. 
you would assume a game like this would have oh, you, great fly mechanics, you'd assume, right? but all lot, it is is fly. A lot of games have got very bad fly mechanics, considering they've been re- how how recently they've been released. I hate like battlefields flying. I can't do it. I just can't do it. <laughs> I just crash. I get into a plane and go straight down, no matter what I do. But I assume a game that's focused on it would be better to control. You'd hope. You'd hope. Oh, yeah. by the way, oh, and Ace Combat is out in three days on PC. Oh right, okay. I knew they had a different release date. Um, yeah, there are also so, two other games that are coming out go that on, you, give us you a... haven't put on the list. There's yep. the Penguin Wars for the PlayStation Four. Ah, so that, I can't which, believe I missed that one off. Go on, yeah, that one. That one's a, an arcade game. But it's a sequel to the classic Game Boy game. If you are the developer of Penguin Wars and you would like us to play the game, please drop us an email at thegalgoboys at gmail dot com. And Clear and there's code. also there's also Genesis Alpha One, which is a roguelike ah. shooter based building survival. Genesis Alpha One again, same offer applies to you. Yeah. Anything if you it, want to talk about these games? Uh, on? I just thought uh, you'd give them a shout. That out. one. Well, I was just say that one. The, the Genesis Alpha One actually seems kind of cool. And why don't it, we um, Why don't we reach out to them and see if they'll uh, give us a code? I will just also, also look to point out that it's another one that isn't released on Steam. Ah, it's is it it's, on, uh, it, it's an Epic Game Store. Interesting. Let's let, let's contact them and see see if they can hit us up with a code. Why not? Genesis Alpha mm-hmm. One. Yeah. And we'll get we'll get one of our roguelike players to uh, give it a shot. Oh, are you a roguelike player, or do we, do we summon Rob? Uh, I was like, I feel, no, I, feel it, that's a Rob. I think it's either Rob or Ed, isn't it? Probably. Yeah, I think it's a Rob. Rob enjoys a roguelike like that, doesn't he? He loves him. So now we've caught up on every game that's out this week. Thanks, thanks, for Torin. Uh, they're all tomo- <laughs> all of those are tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, so yeah. they're all competing against a small all game. All competing Hearts. against yeah. a small indie game of Kingdom Hearts Three. Yeah, not really much anticipated. You know, should slip under the radar. It should be Oof. fine. <laughs> so we'll move on. Uh, we're trying to keep this one a bit short. We'll move on to what we've been playing. Uh, I feel like this. I'm a broken record. I think every single one of these podcasts I've been saying, oh, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts. And I, I basically finished Kingdom Hearts 2 this week. Uh, that's the last one I'm going to play because I don't have time to play the rest. Kingdom Hearts 2 is incredible. The combat is brilliant. Um, apart from one boss, which is, uh, I'll just say for spoilers, I guess, a dual-wielding Keyblade user, which kind of spoils it if you have any idea about Kingdom Hearts 2. His um, name isn't Roxas. No, okay. is he, it's not is, Roxas. Is he the one that you were saying had like beams and you couldn't deal with it? Yeah, he has right, beams okay. that fire at a million just, miles per hour. <laughs> I just remember looking at the Discord and you just said these beams. <laughs> I was like, what is he yeah. on about? <laughs> I was getting so mad. I, I like punched my bed in anger playing the game. I was, I was <laughs> so angry. <laughs> I had to stop playing. Wow. I had to just stop playing and do something else. Cause was, and then I, I, I tried again once and I beat him, as is what usually happens. He was the only hard boss in the game, though, which is strange, considering I had a tough time with a few in Kingdom Hearts 1. All the tough bosses in Kingdom Hearts games are in the optional bosses. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I'd not done any of the optional stuff in. I did some of the optional um, organisation 13 members that you can fight. Mm. I did some of those. They were fine. But obviously, did you try our friend Sephiroth? No, I tried Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 1, died yeah. immediately, and then thought, no, if, I'm done. If you ever feel like you're doing well at Kingdom Hearts, just go fight Sephiroth, and he'll, just, <laughs> he'll, he'll straighten you out and put you back down to, like, mortal level. He'll yeah. be like, holy fuck, what the hell does happen? I wonder, if he's in this one, I, I feel like I'm going to, like, grind this one out. So if Oh, yeah, I'm going to... I kind of want to 100% this game if yeah. I can. Yeah, I'm probably going to try this Like, yeah, obviously, 2005, I don't even... I, I don't even want to think how young I was. But, obviously, I was shit at games. Now it's like... If if I really enjoy a game, I want to one hundred percent it. Yeah, and it's not like because previously I was in a rush to get through the games for this, whereas yeah, yeah. now I can just take my time with it, which is great. Take your time. So you've just raised us a mildly interesting point there mm. about the difficulty of Kingdom Hearts, and then yes. said that it was fourteen years ago. You were young. Is the difficulty related to the fact of your incapability as a younger person? Uh, well, it's just I just know. I've or, been playing or, games or since they, then the entire time. Are genuinely difficult fights? I, I, well, I, I, thought, I'm bad at games. I thought they were much. I thought they were hard when I was younger. That's what I mean. I remember well, is it just like a, an illusion hard. of hardness because you were bad? Oh, no. probably. Well, I probably, mean, yeah. I, I, play, I, mean, I can't play Dark Souls, so maybe I'm bad, but I can't. Some of those well, bosses in like, Kingdom Hearts were hard for yeah, me. I think some, some of those... 
I think some of those is like you kind of got to get a, a rhythm of how things work. Like Dark Souls bosses kind of demand that you lose a couple times to understand what's going on and then you beat it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then was I, I, all I can remember is I was probably bad. It was probably just a case of me being much worse at video games back then. And that's why I thought the game was much harder than it was. Yeah, Although the, Sephiroth, I still stand by Sephiroth and yeah, the optional okay. bosses are still s- fucking solid. Right. Okay. Like, ridiculously hard. Yeah. Fun games. They really are fun games. Uh, Birth by Sleep was, was good. Good, interesting, like, sort of like prequel. And I'm currently doing Dream Drop Distance, which is just time travel weirdness so far. I don't really have much to say about that. But apparently it's important, so I need to finish it. Uh, we've been playing a lot of Sea of Thieves still on stream. You can tw- check us out, twitch.tv forward slash galgoboys. Uh, we basically just, we've been trying to get, so this is, we'll talk briefly about Sea of Thieves because well, I feel like we've talked about it a lot last episode. So what we're trying to do is because we have more than four friends, uh, Rur have decided that you can't play the game with, what you can do is ally with other ships. Okay. So if you are, if you're in a galleon and you see another galleon in the sea, you can now ally with them and, and be a fleet and you show up on the map, etc., etc. What you can't do is now, for some reason, you can't have two two galleons of your mm. friends. You can't join the game with your friends. Because mm. I, I get it, you either have no fleets or you have fleets that your friends can join. I, there shouldn't be an in-between option that they're currently, they've currently gone with. I think you it's can strange. only fleet with randoms. Yeah, I yeah. think they like the idea of you just allying with some random people yeah. that you meet out in the sea. I understand that, but you can... It's just so frustrating trying to get into games with more people when yeah. the option is kind of there now. Mm. But it's like, I think they also, if you just buddy up and fleet up straight away, like if you do it with two ships, you people are like, oh, do it with three. Oh, well, I've got more than three galleons worth of friends. That's put, I need six. Yeah. I need a group of yeah, six, and then you just hand. join a server and you just stomp it <laughs> in a fleet of six. Yeah, like you, you'll yeah. just Possible. never. Yeah, you'll just never come across PvP because everyone's like, let's avoid that fleet of six galleons. Yeah. And I think too, they would also need to rebalance like the P- their PvE as well. Like, a one Megalodon is not going to stand against six galleons. No, definitely like, it not. Would have to, it would have to be a <laughs> big <you> a <laughs> big Megalodon or yeah. multiple Megalodons to, to once, even yeah. yeah to even come close to a, it being a challenge for the fleet. And being like an actual risk, like, but we I got st- Kraken last night. By the yeah, way, yeah, destroyed us. We had oh, we, got, we got we got absolutely fucked. Did you yeah, just have nothing? Hard, did you not the not repair the hole? We had no wood left. Oh. yeah, we ran out. We literally just ran out of wood. We could have killed it, but we ran out of supplies. Yeah, scab like it was scary. The scary. Kraken's quite difficult to kill as well. Like because it, is, it takes a long time. It's fucking annoying. Yeah. yeah. Like honestly, it makes the megalodon seem so easy. Yeah, it's what uh, most a lot of the time. What I've heard is that people just you just sail that sail all the way down, get the wind, and just sail away from it like, as quick as you can. Just get out of it. It doesn't. It didn't let us move it, last. No, because uh, another thing it, that it does can, is it, it inks the through, water. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it inks the water, and you can't like if you're in like a rowboat, you can barely row. You can't do anything. Like the way it chokes your ship. Um, I mean, maybe you can get away from it. We fucking couldn't. Yeah, we just got yeah. destroyed, basically. We got absolutely annihilated by it. It took a long time, but we were never really going to win the fight. No. Oh, well. Game's fun. Um, I kind of... Fas- I do foresee Owen. I don't know about... I foresee it being more fleet-based later on. Like, I can see the game growing, and and, yeah. and as the game gets older, it's going to be focused on maybe fleets and stuff like that. I hope so, mate, not. But I hope it's not were- fully focused on fleets, because I, yeah. I, I want that from the... You know the skull, skull and bones that's coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I want, I want that to be more fleet work, fleet. Like fleet heavy. Or also, I think on those, the the ships look physically bigger, so you can fit mm. more people on the ship, and it might yeah. have more. They got loads of cannons on, on those as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, but I don't That'd know how much of that is like hired AI and stuff. Like yeah, you just, yeah, probably, probably how, a how much you, thing. yeah, how much you can actually do on your ship. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm looking forward to that one. And so, I think that's good. Brad, have you got anything to mention Sea of Thieves, or are we just same old? Just carrying on. It's a, it truly is a pain in the ass trying to connect more than two ships in that server last night. I wish we could at least have eight eight man groups. Can we just have eight? 
Yeah, well, on, on give one us boat. some leeway. Give us some leeway. No, no, no. I, just two, if we two, can three. at least just have two ships at max. Because I feel that's a realistic amount of friends yeah, to have. As soon as one person, as soon as they implement that, it, the Reddit will just be filled. Oh, now we need three. Oh, we need three. Oh, now we need four. Oh, five, yeah. five, guys. <laughs> yeah, oh, you've added, you right. you've added one before. Add six. <laughs> I just want, I just that's want eight just, because that would solve just, our problem right now. Yeah, exactly. That's just how I, I foresee that happening. If they add it once, they will be like, yeah. oh, you've added it once. Just do it again. No, it, 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 again. it makes sense. It makes sense. But it's just so, fucking annoying when you nail it the first time trying to get multi-server and then, uh, and then you try like twenty times the next day and it doesn't work. Yeah, it's just annoying. Wait, so, did you actually manage it one time? Yeah, first try. Wow! For the first we ever time, it. first we ever time we tried it, first try nailed it, and then yesterday we tried it about fucking twenty five times and we didn't Never get it. Worked, so, so Owen, really you've been cool. playing. Uh, just looking here, Disney Heroes Battle Mode. Oh, I have yes. <laughs> Is this a mobile game? How did you know? <laughs> uh, just by the name. <laughs> Yeah, it, it Give is us a rundown. A, it is a Disney, um, or it is a mobile game. Even it basically, I often look for like just games on my phone for when I'm like in bed or whatever. Yeah, and, and this one's been like advertised on my Facebook for a while now, and I've just said, oh, ignored he it. He got you. He got you. Um, and basically, yeah, they they got me. It's how I, it's how most of them get me. To be honest, I'm scrolling through Facebook. I'm like, fuck it, yeah, I'll try that one. See that that Facebook advertising. It. Um, but I've been I've been been playing this one for a week solid now like every day um nice. which it, it's more than most i normally like log in once or twice on others but this one i'm, I'm hooked um I'm, I'm picturing in my head before you explain it i'm picturing in my head star wars galaxy of heroes with disney characters yes. yeah is that's that just, exactly, is that that's, the game that's it that is exactly <laughs> what it is what i guess yeah i've, I've played that one so i know yeah it's, it's yeah. like that it's like marvel strike force um yeah. a few a few other ones but basically yeah, you just have Five, five heroes on your team, um, and yeah, you just you can upgrade the stars, improve you like you equip badges that you get from defeating levels. Um, it gets really it like the power curve gets really difficult on the campaign. So I'm at a yeah. point where I th- easily three star the previous mission, and I die on the first wave of the next mission. <laughs> Gotta spend some money. Yeah, exactly, that's what I was gonna say. But I don't. I don't. Maybe, but I'm. I'm not really inclined to. It's. What? Which is what? strange what? for me to say because I'm. I'm a while. Yeah. So. Would you recommend it to a mobile game fan or maybe a Disney fan? I guess. Um, more a mobile game fan than a Disney fan. Uh, yeah. The the theme of it being Disney is alright, and you get some cool interaction between like Vanellope and Ralph and things like that. <laughs> um, nice. Um, uh, all all of the characters. So like, I've got Violet and Dash, and they have like arguments and stuff sometimes. And there's a w- one mechanic in there which I haven't seen in many other games is a friendship, um, between your heroes that you have okay. to like you, you like rank it up. And so yeah. the f- the first one that you get is Ralph's friendship with Vanellope, and yeah. then Vanellope has a friendship with Dash. And you've got you've got like a separate campaign that you have to do to level that up with a different energy that's bar. Interesting, that's interesting. Um, I take it. Do you get do you get like a boost or something for that? How do yeah. You so when you get when you complete the campaign, you unlock like a memory from them, and yep. you can equip that memory, and that memory boosts your power. Yep. Cool. So yeah. Other than that, so it's pretty, pretty it's standard. A, yeah, standard, pretty standard recipe. Yeah. yeah. Just re-skin Make some money. Disney. Make some Disney money. Yeah. Easy money. So Connor, uh, I know you're not too far into it, and we'll probably do a, an actual discussion video later on on the channel, on the YouTube channel. Mm. But can you give us some initial? I know you played the demo as well. Some initial With, early without impressions. any spoilers. Yeah, of, I've of not Resident Evil yet. Two. Yeah. So, um, fuck it. Equipment is a nightmare. Like it really hammers the uh, the thingy home. Don't waste your your bullets and stuff like that. Can you drop uh, things? Yeah, no. You yes, discard you and it's gone. You can discard. Okay, you, you can discard. Yeah, yeah, but, it, yeah, but it's gone. I don't gone. think you could discard in the original, though. In, oh, in, okay. in the Resident Evil 1 remake, you cannot drop things. Like, you, you can't discard or anything. You have to, like... Right. Well, you can weird. discard in this, but then you can't... You, it's non-recoverable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, like, being smart with your inventory is really important Mm -hmm. because you feel like, like, earlier I got a, I had a, uh, an important item that was needed, um, and I had to pick up another thing to combine it with, but I can't combine it. I have to have it in my inventory first, and it's like, oh god, what am I supposed to get rid of here? I've got like two healing items, which obviously I want to keep, um, and then I've got like one gunpowder, and it's like, well, if I find another gunpowder, then I can combine it into more bullets, and then reload, and then free my slot, and it's like, you want to be efficient with things, or at least what you want to do is like, when you pick up random items that you know are like, okay, well, it's it's obviously going to be used for something if it's like random stone, um, or square-shaped stone or something, you put it in storage, and then you come back to it later. That's what you want to do. You don't want to just hammer, like, hold it around with you, like, oh, what what if I run into it? So that's just something I'm getting used to, because I never played the originals. Um, but it's, doesn't, it's it, doesn't it also Bonner. it also marks the items on your map when you see them as well? So you don't need to necessarily pick. Or if it's gunpowder and something, you can just leave it there and then go back to it later. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the other thing, right? But if if you know when I'm doing it first time and I'm oh, not, yeah. I didn't know that, and I pick it up and I'm like, oh, sweet gunpowder. Hopefully, I'll find some more so I can combine it later. And then and then I don't, and I'm like, wow, well, here I am. <laughs> Fuck, <Yeah. laughs> I'm gonna have to be inefficient now. And drop something, which sucks. But yeah, it's um, it's, it's I really really like the game. I wanted to play it more earlier, but I was like, when I was streaming it, I was dropping some frames with it because it's quite an intense game. So mm-hmm. I was like trying to figure out some things with it. Um, but I do want to play much more of it. And I'm really bad with scary games. Awful with them. I'm a ma- I'm such a pussy. Um, Same. And, and I love it. I really enjoy it. The stuff where I'm like. Oh well, that's gonna that's gonna. I know exactly what's gonna happen when I walk into here. I can see it. It's one hundred percent. I'm gonna. I know what's gonna happen, and it still scares me. <laughs> still yeah. scares me. I'm like, what's gonna happen? Three, two, one, and it'll happen on one, and I still jump. I'm like, fuck. Mm. <laughs> but yes, fuck. It's a good game. <laughs> fuck me. It's a good game. It's so, so immersive. How, how far in are you? I mean, like um, time wise. I'm about. Well, I've got eighty three minutes in the game. Okay. So um, an hour and a bit, and it's not a spoiler, but was it because you saw it in the demo? I mean, I've seen the liquor. Look, um, have you seen him inside, or is he still going on the outside? Inside, I've seen him okay, once yeah. inside. It was a very, very scary encounter. Very. Because <laughs> I, 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 I had no my, idea what they do. Yeah, I was watching my friend play it, and he, uh, I was, I was just like, "Don't move," because they're they're blind. So they, yeah, they they can't see you if you stand still. But if you start yeah. moving around and running, they can hear you. I I tried to move as slowly as possible. It didn't yeah. see me go through a door, and because when I got close, I was like, oh, "Can I flashbang it? Would that fuck it?" And then I was like, "Oh god, it's just a brain. Like it has no eyes." So I was like, "Oh okay." So if I just keep really quiet, and then yeah. managed think, to get past a, it, and then when flash... I went back out, it was gone. I was like, oh. yeah. a, "A flashbang's are really good against them because it makes a sound as well, and it does daze them." Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, because they've got really yeah. sensitive hearing. So anything like that, right. and they'll just like stagger and end up on their back or whatever for a bit. You just take I just, a shot I didn't, I just didn't want to risk. I just didn't want to risk fighting it. I didn't know how tanky it was going to be. So I was just like, if I can get past it or around it, I'll try. From, from previous experience of other Resident Evil games, they're not super tanky, right? But they they do absolutely rinse you if if they get to you. Yeah. Anyway, scary stuff. Good game. I like it a lot. Bradius, any interest in this one? Uh, honestly, the Resident Evil games... Resident Evil 2 sounds interesting, because I liked 4, and it sounds quite similar. Uh, so, so, so this attempted. is... Inter- what, what we should what we should have, right? We need the, we have got the klaxon for no PS game that Brad can't play because it's on <laughs> consoles. And we need now another sound asset for a game that Brad doesn't care about. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you'll, it could just be a sound notice, of Brad saying, I don't care. A lot of overlap. Do we also need a... Th- we also need a third one of one where he says, "Yeah, I'm interested in that," and it's like a <laughs> hallelujah one. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We need, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll you say this like I'm the person here who calls all games shit, Zach. <laughs> yeah, but at least I play them first. Yeah, he that's has interest it. in them and then reviews them afterwards, rather than being like, "Yeah, it's oh, not yeah interesting. I'm, just not gonna, I'm just not going to play." Is it, I'll, Brad? And you've put down here you played Sea of Thieves and Smash. You've you've had a busy week. Uh, there is a. I feel like there's some kind of total war game coming out soon. Oh, three. I was mentioning three kingdoms a while back to you. 
It's the yeah. it's, uh, it's the like is that out, China is that out one. soon? I'm just gonna find out now. I feel like it's out very soon. Give us a give us an update, Brad. Uh, okay, Brad game park. Seventh of March apparently. So we've got tenth. Seventh of March. So seventh, two weeks, okay. five weeks. Seventh of March. Is are you picking this up on launch, Brad, or are you not interested in this one either? Uh, no, I'm interested in this. It. Of course, Total War. <laughs> are you picking it up on launch? Yeah, definitely. Nice. So at Pog. least in five weeks, boys, we'll have Brad on the podcast, and we'll be able to discuss a game with him that he'll be interested. Brad in. has played a game. I'm looking forward yeah. to Fire Emblem, but I've no idea when that's coming out. Oh, I don't know when that's out. I'm looking forward to Animal Weeb Crossing. Weeb games. Get Ew. Animal Crossing out. Gosh, did you I just say I'm Animal Crossing? Yeah. Did you Did you see the video of uh, a guy's nan who has like 3,000 yes. hours in that game? Yeah, yeah I crazy. saw that cool. as well. She had such a good village. <laughs> 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 but she hadn't caught all the insects or the fish and stuff because she like yeah. there's something you can only catch at night and she like she was asleep or something and she couldn't get them. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Man, yeah. I- I'm excited for that game on Switch. Oh, I think I'll actually play that one. Yeah, on Switch, I'll give it a try. I-, I might give it a pass. I played it on the DS and it was just it... no. It's, it's not usually not my game. type of game. Yeah, it's, it's not, not my kind of thing. It's like Stardew Valley isn't my kind of thing. And it's oh, I like a bit of Stardew. It's, yeah. I don't. That's fair enough. They're definitely not for everyone. All right, we'll wrap up. Anyone? Anyone got any anything else they want to quickly talk about before we wrap up? No, nothing from me. Oh, good. Kingdom Hearts ain't coming out. It's a dream. <laughs> yes, we'll have some videos going up for Kingdom Hearts. Uh, not you just straight said it's away. Not coming out. <laughs> yeah, I said it's not coming out. <laughs> it's I'm just dreaming. Oh, yeah, sorry. We'll have no videos coming out for Kingdom Hearts because it's not real. It's not real. It's not coming out tomorrow, boys. If it does in fact come out, we'll have videos. We'll have a sort of initial thoughts discussion and a spoiler-filled discussion probably in like a couple of weeks, maybe a week or two, once yeah. everyone's got through it. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, uh, or listening, one of the two. We are available on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, and quite a lot, pretty much every other podcast service. If you if you do listen to a podcast service that we're not on, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you are in the comments, are you excited oh. for Kingdom Hearts 3? How would and they let you know if they're not in listening? In the comments. <laughs> they watch on YouTube, if but they listen to... Uh, oh, right, okay. Yeah. If <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're going to be playing Kingdom Hearts 3, let us know how excited you are. And No please, spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. And please, of course, as usual, when Brad's on the podcast, let him know how stupid he is for not owning a console. So, uh, I've been Zach. You can follow me at Zachary, Z-A-C-E-R-H-Y. Uh, Brad, do you want to say goodbye? Uh, yeah, well, see us, and I don't need a console, don't ask me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Owen? Peace. Any, anywhere, anywhere to follow you, Owen, or are you still there? Uh... Nah, well, I, only the Twitter, which I've fa- Oh, I found out that my, I last time I was on, I gave the wrong handler. Oh, it's it's, it's Owen says it's Ed one Ah, um, the on one. Twitter. The one is needed. And yeah. it's Owen says it's Ed one two three on Twitch, right. and like Chapman and everywhere else. Connor, follow our Twitch and my Twitch and YouTube. Everything else is on there. Are you going to give out those? Your what? Are, what are those? What's your Twitch, Connor? Twitch slash con underscore chan. Correct. Or more importantly, do follow the Galago boys on there and subscribe to our YouTube. Fuck's sake. Yeah, watch our oh, YouTube videos, please. A, watch bit, them and subscribe right fucking now. You don't need to be so aggressive. Come on now. Man. If you are watching this podcast, just subscribe. It's very easy to do. It's there's for what, free. There's what, free. One, one button down there somewhere or there. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a red one. Um, it says in huge letters, subscribe. You can click it. It's and like it. Free. Why Make not? Like. It's it also free. free. This is the neediest yeah, I've ever free. heard, you guys. There's, there's not much free in this day Yeah, tell you what you can get, boys. <laughs> It's so free. You don't have to spend a penny on liking or subscribing. So just fucking do it. And just think, when you subscribe, you get to see every video in which Brad will say that he hates games. And so you can just slaughter Brad in the comments. Just yeah, keep it going. Much, I it's can't really believe great how much you two are selling out. <laughs> oh, sell out, sell out, sell out. What do you mean? If anyone wants what do you mean us? I hate games? That's you and Sam. If anyone wants to sponsor us, you can do it. It's at gmail.com. Send us a link to your game or a code. We'll be uh, we'll be straight on that bandwagon, hundred percent. 
Uh, Follow me at Live Jasmine. Dick picks for subs. <laughs> I'll trade. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and, uh, I think apart from that we've covered everything so as usual thanks for watching and listening and we'll see you next week bye bye so, yeah. peace